Archiving started. Okay, so lesson 10. And lesson 10 contains a couple of different kinds of assignments, uh, two of which are rhythmic counting, counting rhythms, and then the last one, 10.3, is uh, solfege or uh, sight singing syllables numbers, whichever you're going to use, and we're going to go through uh, 10.1, 10.2, 10.3. Uh, one thing, if you're not aware, in the textbook, before you ever start this, if you're not quite sure what's going on, then um, page five has a whole listing of types of notes and their equivalents. So what that means is that uh, it will say uh, a quarter note and the equivalent an eighth note to that would be two eighth notes has the same duration as a chord note. So that could be helpful if you're having any trouble. Page six in the text goes through dotted notes. Remember, excuse me, remember that a dotted note, a dot adds half the value back to the note. Something important to remember. Uh, and on six and seven, stems, flags, beams, ties, and slurs, those things hopefully you know what's going on with those. Uh, we are going to do some counting with tied notes, so that might be an issue. Page eight goes through rest, different kinds of rest. And page nine, meter signatures, excuse me, which are simple, compound, unequal, and triplets, all different kinds there. So that's something you might want to keep in mind. Of course, now I'm going to have a coughing attack, but that's okay. Eastman system, this document is linked in a couple of spots in the DL site there, the uh, lesson site. One is in the, on the very first uh, page with uh, help there for you, different things that might help you out. And then it's also linked on a couple of different pages. So I use the Eastman system for teaching counting. There are a couple of different ways to even use Eastman, but the style that I use is where each uh, note that begins on the beat is called by the number of the beat. That's rule number one. A note that begins halfway between two beats is called te, and it's spelled T-E, pronounced T-A-Y, te. A note that begins on the second quarter of the beat is T, T-I, a note that begins on the second third of the beat is la, and on the third third of a beat is called li, and that has to do with dividing beats into threes. Any other note is called ta. Uh, in North Texas, it's pretty common to use a modified version of this where it is not a one t te ta, but it's one ta te ta. And I don't like that because I like for the four, if the beat is divided into four parts, I like for each one of those to have a different syllable. So if you have a question during any of this, I don't think you will, but uh, if you do, you can ask me or stop me at any point. I'll try to watch the chat there. Okay, so assignment 10.1 uh, is the first one that comes up. And the issue with 10.1 which gives people a problem, is when an eighth note gets one beat. If you look, this is right, um, this is right out of your textbook, most of these examples are. It won't be the same thing that's on the assignment, the same example that's on the assignment for you to do, but it'll be relatively uh, similar to it. So this is three, the meter signature is three eight. The eight on the bottom indicates that there, an eighth note is getting one beat. This is what confuses people. After we've, everything we've been doing so far is that a quarter note is getting one beat, which has a four on the bottom. So when we change to an eighth note getting a beat, that makes a difference and it gets a little bit confusing. Okay, so if an eighth note is getting a beat and there are three beats in a measure, each one of these measures should have three beats. Uh, 
if you look at the first eighth note, that would occur on beat number one. Hi, Diana. Do you have a mic uh, microphone you can speak to me, or are you just going to be texting? Maybe she can't hear me yet. I don't see her uh, coming up yet on the connection. So we'll, I'll watch and see if she comes up there. Anyway, okay, so the first quarter note would be beat number one. That makes sense because it's very, it's at the very uh, beginning of the measure. There's nothing before it. The, the first sound of the measure. So that's what has to happen. It's on beat number one. Remember, an eighth note is getting one beat. Here's the second eighth note. If the first eighth note is on occurring on beat number one, then the second eighth note, of course, is occurring on beat number two. Now the next two are a little bit different because you can see that uh, we're not into eighth notes anymore, we're into sixteenth notes. Okay, I see uh, Diana and Kimberly. And uh, Diana, do you have a microphone you're going to speak into or are you going to text me? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. That's great. Okay, so you're going to use a mic. And Kimberly, what about you? Do you have a mic or are you going to text? Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to watch the text box a little better than I did the first go around on this if people have a question. So we just started on lesson uh, 10 and we're on assignment 10.1 and we're talking about when an eighth note is getting a beat instead of what we've been doing previously, which was a quarter note is getting one beat. This gets people confused from time to time. So I just went through um, the beats here. The, it's in 3-8 time three beats to a measure, an eighth note is getting one beat. The first eighth note is occurring on beat number one. That means the sound is occurring on beat number two. And then the second eighth note would be occurring on beat number two. I'm just going to redo this here so that kind of catch them up. Okay, so now we're on to uh, the sixteenth note. In the Eastman system, uh, your rule says a note that begins halfway between two beats is called pe. So when you are uh, dividing the eighth note into two equal sounds, those two equal sounds are going to be two sixteenth notes. Now, I, I just uh, talked to Timothy about the fact of on different pages, starting on page six in your textbook, it gives the equivalence, the note values and their equivalence. So you can go back there. If you're not quite sure how these divide up, then you can go back there and find out and make sure that you know. So an eighth note divided into two equal sounds would be two sixteenth notes. The first of the sixteenth notes, this one here, actually occurs on Beat number, anyone wager a guess on that? I'm sure most of you know. I have beat number one for the first eighth note, beat number two for the second eighth note. So that second eighth note takes up one whole beat. So the next, yeah, I see people texting three, so that's good. The next uh, note actually starts or the, the sound starts on beat three. Now, if your rule in Eastman says a note that begins halfway between two beats is called te, then the second sixteenth note is actually the second half or it ends up halfway in between. So it is called te. 
this is all relative. If I had a if I had a quarter note, a quarter note, and two eighth notes, it would still and, and we were in three four time, it would still be one, two, three K. So everything becomes different when you put that eighth note on the bottom. You have to look at everything different. Okay, so now I have um the rhythm. I'm gonna see if you can I'm gonna click this is the beat. By the way, I'm going to kind of go over something that might help help you too as far as foot tapping. If you tap your foot with this beat as you're trying to count something, if your foot, you put your heel down and your toe is going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, that divides one beat into two equal parts. The down is the beat and the up is the second half of that beat. So if you keep your foot going, that kind of, that helps you out. That's why they teach children to do that when you're in band and everything. And then, of course, later it's a big problem, but that's okay. Um, all right, so if I'm doing this, this is my beat. One, two, ready, count. One, two, three, take. So that worked out just fine. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on all of these, but if you look at the second measure, you see two sixteenths. Okay, that first sixteenth note, I've already used up three beats in the first measure, so the first sixteenth note of the next measure begins on beat. Anybody? It's pretty obvious that uh, it's right there at the beginning of the measure. You know, you're right here on the beginning of the measure. There's nothing previous. There's no sound previous to that. So uh, it starts on beat number one. Again, there are two sixteenth notes, so that's divided into half. Uh, uh, it's going to be one, and then the second half of that beat will have to be a te, one te. I used up one te. And now the next eighth note getting one beat is the next eighth note is going to occur on which beat? Okay, Timothy, Kimberly say two, beat two. Diana, you can you're the only one that's on the microphone, so you're not going to really step on anyone. So if you want to just speak at your leisure, you may. If you don't want to speak, that's fine too. But uh feel free to ask a question or whatever, so I won't have to really uh, divvy out who can talk when and all that. Okay, so now we're up to beat number two. The last, six, uh, excuse me, the last eighth note of the measure is beat number three. So now the second measure I have one, te, two, three. These first three measures are just combinations of the eighth and the 16th with three beats in the measure. Uh, the third measure, one, and here are those two 16ths again. The first one starts on beat two, and the next one is a half, so it's te, two te, third eighth note is beat number three. So the third measure is one, two te, three. And then easy as pie, the last measure are three eighth notes. So that's just going to be counted one, two, three. Now you notice that uh, these are all beamed across. You see the beams there. Uh, it doesn't matter if the notes have flags on them. And if it had one flag on it, it would be an eighth note. Or if they're beamed, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't uh, have an effect. Uh, this one, for example, that measure that I just circled, it could be, the first two eighth notes could be beamed, and then the third eighth note could have a flag on it. Still three eighth notes, so it doesn't, it doesn't have an effect. Uh, it looks different, but as far as how it's going to sound, doesn't matter. Okay, so... Here we are with the correct answer for what we just did. I hope they're all correct. Uh, 
up at the top is the Eastman, what, which we just did. I'm going to show you something else on the bottom here in just a minute also. But uh, counting with a steady beat, the 3-8 time, and my foot right now is going down, up, down, up, down, up down up and that shows me where the K is going to be every time so the three eight one two three one ready count one two three K one K two three one two K three one two three everybody clear on that pretty easy If I'm going at a relatively slow speed, then I might want to use one, two, three, K. There is another way that I can do this, and a lot of times it has to do if you're going in a faster tempo or a faster speed. And in the Eastman system, you can divide uh, a beat into three equal parts, and each one of those parts has a different syllable. The first part of that beat is the number of the beat, as always in Eastman, like one. The second third of the beat is called la, and the third third of the beat is called li. And I thought I would just show you this, so that uh, you see that at a faster clip or faster tempo, I might want to do this in a different way. It's still the same counting. It still same, sounds the same way. But I'm, instead of kind of making three slower separate beats out of it, I'm kind of putting the three together and making one big beat out of it. And I think I might have that somewhere in one of these assignments. I can't remember off the bat. But uh, if you look at that the way that I've uh, shown it here, here's beat number one. Here's the second third of the beat, which is la, and here is the third third. Now, what do you do for the second half of that third beat? In Eastman, everything else is ta. So, so it goes, I'm sorry, li ta, not la. One la li ta, and then one ta la li, one la ta li, one La Li. Now, there's no point in really doing that if you're kind of going slow, but sometimes if you're going at a faster speed and you want to, uh, I'll probably get tongue tied trying to do it, but if I want to go faster, which this is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, go, one La Li, ta, one La Li, one La ta, Li, one La Li. Try it again. One La Li, ta, one ta, La Li, one La ta, Li, one La Li. So, so it's the same thing as the way we counted them out with numbers. It just goes at a faster clip, and it's using the east one that divides it into threes. This is the way you do triplets usually, so I thought I would just mention that. And I hope I don't confuse you with that. Just something to kind of know and be aware of. Okay, going on. 10.1b. This has to do with 6-8 time and also... If you notice, there is a tie. Some people are having trouble with the ties. Uh, don't ask me why the second set of notes are green. I guess I'm just artistic, but they're not really supposed to be different, so don't get confused with that. Um, okay, so this is 6-8 time. We just did 3-8 time. 6-8 time, six beats in a measure, and an eighth note gets one beat. We just did three beats in a measure, and an eighth note gets one beat. This is no different, but we have to go up through beat number six. And we also have to know the equivalence of the beat. Uh, okay, so if an eighth note gets one beat, how many beats does a quarter note get? Anybody want to venture an answer for me? So we have an eighth note getting one beat, and a quarter note is going to now get two beats. Will it be different for the rest? No. Here's an eighth note rest right here. It gets one beat, 
and here's a quarter note rest, it gets two beats. So let's go through this and, and count this out. Okay, starting with the first quarter note. If the first quarter note begins on beach, beat number one, which it does, it's at the beginning of the measure, and it gets two beats, it's going to take up beat number one and beat number two. Now, what I advocate doing is whenever a note is going to last longer than one beat, I advocate putting a dash there, so whoops, I guess I'm going to do this one in red, so that you can tell that the beat lasts more than one beat. So the quarter note gets two beats. It goes, it starts on beat number one. It lasts through beat number two, taking up two beats. If that is true, then what is this um, eighth note right here, the next the next note, which is the eighth note. Which beat is the eighth note going to occur on? Four. Four. Okay, let's let's look, let's think about that. Okay, the quarter note is two beats. We agreed on that, right? So it's beat takes up so beat I'm sorry, number I'm one. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Beat number three. Sometimes it just takes like looking at this a little bit more to figure out what's going on. So that the quarter note is beat one and two, and the uh, eighth note is beat number three. Okay, if the eighth note is beat number three, and it gets one beat, what will the next eighth note get? Or actually not what will it get, what will the ex next eighth note, which beat will it occur on? I'll say it right in a minute. Okay, I see one, four, and one, te. Okay, let's talk about te. Remember what te does in Eastman system. Te is the second half of a beat, or it's halfway in between two beats. In this example of six, eight time, every eighth note is getting one beat. So there's nothing in this yet that's divided up into two. Remember when we did three eight time, the eighth note, if it was divided into two equal sounds, it was two sixteenth notes. So we don't have that yet. So the first note, the quarter note, takes up beat one and two. The next eighth note is occurs on beat number three. And the next eighth note occurs on beat number four. It gets one beat. If it gets one beat, then the next quarter note is going to occur on which beat? We just had we just had an eighth note on beat number four, and we know that an eighth note takes up one beat or lasts for one beat. So the next quarter note is going to occur on beat number five. That is correct. Okay, can I just put a five there though? I could, but what I really want you to, to always show me is that uh, the note is lasting longer than one beat. And that quarter note is lasting longer than one beat. It's lasting two beats. So I would like to put the dash there to show that it starts, the sound occurs or starts on beat number five and it lasts through beat number six. Okay, is everybody with me on this one? Let's look at that measure. You can talk to me uh, while I'm trying to talk, but uh, that's okay. There aren't that many of you. So here is my here is my pulse or the beat that I'm using. One, two, 
three. My foot again is going down, up, down, up, down, up. One, ready, count. One, three, four, five. Did, did I count it correctly? Did I give the quarter note two, two pulses? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I think I counted it correctly. Okay. So that's um, measure number one. Measure number one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, do you mind if we use the, like, put two in parentheses and six in parentheses, or would you rather use the dash line? I don't really care as long as you know what you're doing. I usually can tell if you know what you're doing. Sometimes people forget to put the parentheses, and that's kind of the problem with that. So if you forget to put the parentheses around, and what she's talking about is if you put the parentheses around a note or a number, that means that that number doesn't have an attack on it or note, a note doesn't, the sound doesn't start there. So uh, I don't mind if you do it that way. I just think if you do the dash, it shows it better. It shows that the, the sound is continuing and it doesn't um, have an attack on it. But, but if, if you're comfortable doing it that way and you, you know what's happening, that's fine with me. I have people that do it that way, you know, from time to time. So whatever you think, as long as you understand. Okay, next measure. Now, these three eighth notes look different because they have a beam across. They could have uh, flags, like in the first measure, three separate flags on each one of them, but they don't. They have a beam, so they are eighth notes. Okay, eighth note, eighth note, eighth note. Which beat does the first eighth note occur, or where, where does that first sound occur on the, that one? This is pretty basic. I'm kind of getting lower than you people here, I think. But it is on one. You can tell we already went through six, and there's only six beats in every measure. So... That occurs on one, and it takes up one beat, or it lasts for one beat. The next one will occur on, the sound will occur on beat number two. Very good. And the next one will be on three. Really simple. One, two, three. Now we have a quarter note rest and an eighth note rest. Whenever you have the rest, uh, the, probably the best thing to do, you can do nothing, and that indicates there's no sound there. But probably the best thing to do is put an R. I like to go ahead and put the dash. That, that rest lasts for two beats, so I put an R dash, and then I put another R for the next one. Remember that rest indicates silence, so there's not going to be anything happening there. Next measure. Now, here is a measure that has a tied note. Uh, if you're not quite clear on ties, you can go back and read what it says. But some people get confused from the tie and a slur, that marking there. Uh, a tie only applies to a note tied to the very same note. Now, the notation that I have on this slide is for percussion, so there are not different notes anyway or different pitches. So these are all going to be uh, tied. If you see this same symbol and it goes from one pitch to a different pitch, then it is not a tie, it is a slur, and that's a different thing, and you're not really getting into slurs, but a slur just means smoothly connected. So, Okay, so here's the same thing that we had in the second measure. We have an, an eighth note on beat number one, an eighth note on beat number two, and an eighth note on beat number three, except that Beat number three is tied over to beat number four. 
when a note is tied, uh, then the, the, the tied note or the second note of the tie does not have a separate attack to it. That means there is nothing that is starting on that beat. It is just continuing. So if I'm counting this and I'm counting the tie correctly, I'm counting as first note one, first quarter note one, second beat number two, third beat number three, and the sound continues there. It continues. It does not have a separate sound. So if that quarter note, oh, excuse me, that eighth note took up one beat right here, then what will the next eighth note, which beat will it occur on? And some people already have that. That is correct. It is beat number five. And then you have another eighth note. It's beat number six. So the way that this is sounding, one, two, three, one, ready, count. One, two, three, five, six. And you hear how I just continued that uh, sound that started on beat three. I continued it through beat four, and then I counted uh, beat number five and number six. Now here's something we had in the three eight time, the next measure that's going to be uh, beat uh, eighth note on beat number one, and here are the two sixteenths. So we know that the second one is going to be a te, and the first of that group of two sixteenth notes is going to occur on beat number two. So it's two te, and then we're on to beat number three, and then look at the next one, that is the quarter note. That begins on beat number this one right here. What beat does that one start on? Okay, I've got a couple of fours. That is correct. Now, it is a quarter note, so in 6-8 time, a quarter note lasts for, it sounds for two beats, so it goes through beat number four. Okay, it's not four rest yet. Four, because it be four dash, because we want it to, to last through beat four and beat five, but beat five is not a separate sound, so it's four with a dash, and then the eighth note rest. Okay, so here is the way it should look. Look at that last measure. Do you see what I mean with the uh, quarter note? Yeah, four, that's right, four, and then the silent rest. Okay, so I'm going to count this one for you. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, one. Ready, go. One, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, three, three, four. So you hear I'm clapping there, and there is going to be a sound on the wrist when I clap. But there is no sound. If I say, for example, if I were a tambourine playing that, I guess maybe a tambourine something. I'm going to count it, but I'm not going to play on the rest now, or I'm not going to keep the beat tapping on the rest. So here we go. One, two, three, one, ready, go. One, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, three, four. Okay, are you with me? Now you 
are not expected to be an expert at counting these or keeping the beat steady or any of that. You're just supposed to be learning how it happens and starting to get it. So do you think you kind of get how this is going? One more quick question more about, quick question uh, about uh, writing, the writing for the assignment. For the assignment. Okay. Uh, number, uh, number four, you say to you just numbers, um, but it's 12 um, eight. eight. So, so there comes a point where you would point to use like five dash five dash. Right. And I'm going to do a 12 eight here in just a minute. I think I have an example of a 12 eight. That's why sometimes you don't want to do all numbers. It gets confusing if you're going faster, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, and you're saying all these numbers. So that's how sometimes you want to combine this down into the Eastman system, and that's the way I have it on the second one. I'll, uh, just a minute, and I think we're going to go to a 12, 8. But, uh, okay, uh, she asked me, uh, when you do 12, 8 time, and you have, uh, I, I was trying to think what kind of a note that would be. I guess it would be a half note or something, dotted, half, whatever. Uh, would you have five, uh, five dashes out beside if it was uh, five dashes out beside if you were just using numbers only? And yes, you would. You would have to do that. And I think I have an example of that coming up. Uh, I'm just going to show you the Eastman system. I'm changing each beat, each eighth note getting one beat into two sets of three. So there are two big beats. So they would be one lolly, two lolly, one lolly, two lolly. Or if I'm counting in sixes, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. You hear the difference there, but it's still one and the same. The, the uh, sound is going to be the same. But I'm going to count this in Eastman down in the bottom with using the triplet kinds of counting. So we have two big beats divided into three separate sounds each. So it's one, two, ready, go. One, lee, two, la, uh, I already counted it wrong. I'm sorry. Ready, go. One, Lee two la one lolly one lolly lolly one lolly two and maybe that's not maybe that's clear as mud to you but sometimes it's easier to do that than what uh, I think it's Diana what Diana is talking about when you get to twelve yeah here's one right here uh, twelve beats in the measure and an eighth note is getting one beat. Now we have counted every one of these notes, every one of these rhythms in here. You just have to go up to 12 beats now. Does everybody understand that? We still have a quarter eighth, quarter eighth, eighth, two sixteenths, eighth, 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 eighth. If I took a bar line and I just put a bar line right in here, that's not very very uh, straight. I can't draw a straight line with this. But I could make this into 6-8 time, and there would only be 6 beats in a measure. Or I could make it into 3-8 time, and there would be 3 beats in a measure. But that's not what's happening, because this is 12 beats to a measure. Okay, so we've got to count all the way up to 12 beats. Let's do this. We're going to do this one quickly because we've already kind of done this. Uh, first quarter note begins on beat number one, lasts for two beats. So it's one. The next eighth note will occur on beat what? Right, three. One, three. Next beat will be beat number Four. So that quarter note right there takes up beats four and five. The next eighth note is beat number, this one right here is beat number 
six. Very good. So it's one, three, four, six. We're up through beat number six. Next eighth note is beat number seven. Okay, now we have the two sixteenths. The first one starts on eight. And the second half of it is going to be K. Eight, K. And then the next eighth note will be beat number nine. I know it's hard to cut, uh, keep up. I can't type them out that quick. I've got the answers on the next slide. You'll see it. So we're up through nine. And then three more eighth notes beat ten and 11, and 12. And there we are. There's 12 beats in the measure. And then I think what Diane is asking me, okay, here the next measure is a dotted quarter. How many beats does a dotted quarter get, by the way, in 12-8 time? If an eighth note's getting one beat, right, if an eighth note's getting one beat, a quarter note's getting two beats, and when you put the dot beside it, you add half of its value back to it. So the quarter note is worth two, half of two is one, add it back to it, it gets three beats. Okay, so here's a, a note that is starting on beat number one. And it is lasting through beat number 12 because they're all tied together. So this one's one, whoops. and the two continued beats of it. And then the way I do it, the way I do it is that you're just putting uh, the dashes there because there is no new sound. Is that what you're asking me, Diana? Okay. But um, when we're writing it in the assignment, right. It would take up so much space that it would bounce high and bounce high in the next line. Is there a different way you want to? Oh, I see what you mean. Mmm. I think these. I think I put them in a small enough font when you write it in there that they'll fit. I thought they would. Thought they would. Okay. Did you Did you try it yet or not? If you just put it, if you put like one, if if say there were no ties in this measure and it was just a a dotted quarter, a dotted quarter, a dotted quarter, a dotted quarter, which is on one of those assignments, I believe. I believe if you just put uh, uh, one dash dash and then you put four dash dash, I think there'll be enough room. If there's not, if you want to string it out, I'll, I mean, I'll figure it out. So that's okay. Okay, Tennessee Baxter says, why not use a whole dotted note. Uh, okay, so he's saying use a whole note with a dot. Uh, so 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right. Uh, it's just not used that often. It, it's not commonly seen by people who are sight reading or people that are playing. Like I sight read a lot. A lot of times when I'm playing piano, I do a lot of sight reading. And if I saw a dotted whole note, I would have to kind of do a double take and try to figure out what that was. Whereas if I see it divided up into these threes, groups of threes with the ties, it's just easier visually to figure out what's going on. Does that make sense? Dotted whole notes just aren't used that much, but I understand what you're saying. It would be correct. You could do that, and it would be absolutely correct. Okay, anybody have any questions over these? Here's the correct answers.
Okay. You have a, uh, Tim, you have another question? Okay. Onward. Lesson 10 assignment, 10.2a. This is a little bit different because it's 4a. We have been doing compound, which is things that are divided into threes, pretty much. You can divide them into threes. This is 4-8 time. Uh, same thing is going to apply, but it's just in even numbers now, uh, in a duple rhythm. So I'm going to let you, why don't you text me what the correct answer is for this counting. And use all numbers. Don't be afraid. Okay, Tim, you are correct. Very good. When we're doing these Wimble lessons, uh, it's not the ideal way to do it, but I think it can be helpful for some people. But uh, if you have uh, staff paper or some kind of paper, sometimes that's helpful too. Okay, here's a quarter note, get two beats. So it's one, and then the next eighth note occurs on beat three. The next one on beat four. Next one, back to beat one. Here's those two sixteenths in four eight time with an eighth note getting a beat. So there are two, te, three, four. Right? So here we go into four beats in a measure. One, two, ready, count. One, three, four. One, two, te, three, four. Everybody with me? Okay, so when you're in duples or things that are, can be divided by twos in these, uh, we're back here into three, four time. Now you're going to have to switch gears and get your brain back to a quarter note gets one beat. This is confusing, I know, sometimes. But now we're back to a quarter note gets one beat, and there are three beats in every one of these measures. So, now, a quarter note gets one beat, and what do you divide a quarter note into two equal sounds? What two notes would those be? So, a, my question, I guess, is a quarter note divided into two equal sounds, those two notes would be what kind of note? Right, eighth notes. Okay, so now eighth notes are dividing one beat. So now if you have two eighth notes, they're going to be the second of a group of two eighth notes. The second eighth note is going to be a te. Everybody with me on that now? Okay, so let's look at this one. All right, three beats in a measure, a quarter note gets one beat. This eighth note begins on beat one. Here is the second eighth note. So we know that divided it into two equal sounds, the second half of the beat. So that's going to be one K. We just used up one of the three beats. Now you see a group of four. Those are sixteenth notes. How many sixteenth notes does it take to make one beat in three, four times? A quarter note 
in a 3-4 time divided into four equal sounds are four sixteenth notes. Correct. Four sixteenth notes. Okay, so in the Eastman system, I want to show you how this comes about here with the four sixteenths and how, how to count them. Uh, two sixteenths, well, okay, I should say it this way, I guess. Uh, a quarter note divided into, it divides into four equal sounds is four sixteenths. What about an eighth note? If a quarter note is four sixteenths, how many sixteenths is an eighth note? I guess that's my question. I'm not saying it very clearly. How many sixteenth notes are within an eighth note? Right, there are two. So here is beat number two, starting right there. Now, in the Eastman system, system, it says a note that begins on the second quarter of the beat is called T, which is T-I. So this is the second quarter of the beat right there. So we are on uh, what beat is that? Beat number two. The second quarter of the beat is T. Now we are here at the halfway point. If you see that we're halfway in between the beat again. And that next 16th note is going to be called K because it is still halfway in between there. So it's K. And then everything else in Eastman is ta. So it's tu ti te ta. Everybody with me? So if there are, um, if a quarter note is getting one beat, and you divide the one beat into four equal parts, it's going to be the first one of those 16th notes will be the number, whatever beat number you are on, one, two, four, five, eight, whatever it is. And then the second quarter of it is T, the half point is T, and the last quarter of it will be ta. Two T, T, ta. That took up beat number two, and now we're ready for beat number three, right here. Starts on three, and the midway or halfway in between is K. So that first measure, one T, two T, 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 three T. Once you have that down, it's just a matter of placing those groupings in the right spot. The next grouping of four sixteenth notes starts on beat number one. So it's one ti te ta. Here's beat number two, the quarter note two. That takes up all of beat number two. And then the third beat starts right here. Three ti te ta. So that measure counted is one ti te ta two, three ti te ta. Four equal sounds. One quarter note divided into four equal sounds, or those 16th notes. Okay, so here's something that gets a little bit confusing to some people, and it's a dotted quarter eighth rhythm in uh, when a quarter note's getting one beat. This is, whoops, wow, that was a crazy thing that I just drew there. Get rid of that. I think I could do better than that, surely. <laughs> Well, that wasn't much better. Anyway, the dotted quarter eighth note rhythm, very common, very, very, very common. And it's hard for people to count it correctly uh, when you're actually tr trying to count the rhythm. Now, you don't have to count the rhythm too much. You do have to listen to it on A-Music Theory, but uh, figuring it out. Uh, if a quarter note is getting one beat, 
how many beats is a dotted quarter getting in 3-4 time? It's one and a half. I'm going to go back up here for a minute. Uh, Tim's asking me an example on the Eastman sheet shows a two ta 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 ta. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to. I don't see that. If you're, maybe you're talking about in the groups of sixes, I'm not sure. It's not a rhythm that we're going to do uh, first line at the end, first row. Oh, two la ta, la ta, la ta, ta, ta. And that's when, that's an uneven grouping of five notes. So uh, two ta, 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 ta is what it is. So if you have your, tr they're trying to show you that if you, it is uh, it is fairly common to take a beat and divide it into five equal parts, or you're trying to divide it into five equal parts. So there's really nothing in Eastman that does that. So it's uh, saying that anything other than any of that other stuff is a ta. So it's two ta 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 five of those. That's that's what they're saying. But that what they're trying to do there is divide one beat into five equal parts, and it's just giving those. No, those uh, sil the syllable of ta. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that's nothing that we're going to be doing. But uh, since let's see, well, what if, however many beats that would be worth, however many portions of one beat divided by five, you have to do some math there to figure it out. So anyway, it would not fall under any of the other rules for Eastman, and that's why it's two ta 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 ta. Okay. All right, now back to this other thing here. A dotted quarter in three, four times. A dotted quarter note gets one and a half beats. Everyone understand that a dotted quarter is getting one and one half beats. The quarter note gets one beat. The dot means it gets half of the value added back, which is a half. So it's one and a half. Okay, so if this dotted quarter note Get, and it starts on beat number one and it gets one and a half beats, then where do you place this eighth note? One and a half for the dotted quarter. Where does the next eighth note occur? Where does that sound occur? Not T. T is the second quarter of a beat. That's not the second quarter of a beat. The eighth note is actually a half of a beat. Anybody know where that? Yeah, Diana says it comes on the tay of the second beat. I'm just going to show you that within a dotted quarter note, there are three eighth notes. Does that make sense to you? That within a dotted quarter note, there are three eighth notes. So one and a half beats takes up three eighth notes. So that dotted quarter takes up, there's one eighth note there, there's one eighth note there, and there's one eighth note there. Do you see that that's a beat and a half, one and a half beats? And then the next eighth note this one right here occurs on the K of beat number two. When you're counting these, I like to pulse the eighth note so I can hear them. So my foot's going down, up, down, up, down, up. One, two, ready, count. It's one, K. Okay. So if you hear each one of those little eighth notes in there, it makes more sense. Ready, count, one, take. That's where that take occurs. If I don't pulse them, it's one, take. So it occurs on the take of beat number two. And then, I mean, yes, of beat number two. And then the next two eighth notes, first one begins on beat number three. And the second half 
is K. Okay, and I don't think I have the next rhythm. I don't really think I have on any of the exercises that I'm going to show you. This is a dotted eighth note. A dotted eighth note takes up three sixteenth notes. So those three sixteenth notes right there, I'm just going to kind of put a little dot there. There be, whoa, that's too big. There would be a 16th note here, here, and here. And right there is the fourth out of a group of 16th notes. So if you started this grouping on beat number one, what is that little 16th note? Where does that occur? So this is one, it takes up one and T and T and that next 16th there or the 16th there is going to be the ta of the first beat. See that? One ta. And then two 16ths in the next grouping starts on beat number two, T, to tite. And then we come to beat number three. Does that make sense? Anyone have questions on that? That's a little bit harder to understand. I'm going to put the correct counting up there. Okay, I'm going to count it for you. You can ask me a question in a minute here if you want. One, te, two, te, go. One te, two te, te ta, three te, one te, te ta, two, three te, te ta, one te, three te, one te, two te, te, three. One more time. One, ready, count. One te, two te, te ta, three te, one te, te ta, two. Three T T T one T three T one T two T T three. Did all that make sense? Clear as mud. Some of those you don't even have to count on the assignments. It's a little, it's a little bit more difficult. Dotted quarter, uh, dotted eighth, sixteenth rhythm. Everybody okay? Tide notes, again, this is easy counting, but you have to make sure that you do not put a number on the tide note. If you do, it means that there is a separate sound that starts on that beat, so you can't do that. Okay, let's count this together. Beat number one, this, by the way, that, um, if you don't remember back, the C there stands for common time. And common time is 4-4 four, four time. In case you don't remember or you've never saw that. Uh, common time is 4-4 four, four time. Okay, so there are four beats in a measure and a quarter note gets one beat. So here's beat number one, quarter note. Next two uh, eighth notes are going to be what? Starting on beat number two and halfway in between is te. Now this this um, half note starts on beat number. It lasts for two beats there in that measure. But what about going across the measure line here? It also entails being tied to the next quarter note, which is the first beat of that next measure. 
Now, Diana, the way you're talking about doing it is putting uh, one in parentheses. That's fine if you want to do that. So actually, how long is that half note going to last for? It's going to actually last for three beats, correct? Okay, so we, we've we already used up beat number one of this measure right here. Beat number one is already used up because it's tied over to that half note. So what beat is the first eighth note going to begin on? Two is correct. And then there's the half, which is te. And then here we go again. Here's a tied note, which begins on the tied um, half note, begins on beat number three again. It lasts for two beats there. It lasts through the first beat of the next measure. And we're back up to beat number two again. Halfway through it is te, and then beat number three, the half note is regular now. It's not tied to anything. So the half note takes up beat number three and beat number four because it's getting two beats. And then um, last measure, quarter note, beat number one, two eighths, starting on beat number two, and the next quarter note. On beat number three, ending with the rest. Any questions on that one? I'm going to try to wind this up quick as I can here. Everybody okay with that one? Okay, I'm just going to count it real quick. One, two, ready, count. One, two, take three. Two, take three. Two, take three. One, two, take three. Rest. Okay? Uh, I'm going to go really quick on this one. Here's three eight time with a tie. Three beats in a measure. An eighth note gets a beat. Beat number one. There's beat number two, but it's tied. So I can't put that as a separate sound. I can't put a two. So I'm putting one un dash and then the next eighth note occurs on beat number three. There's the dotted quarter note in three eight time which is lasting for three beats now. Next eighth note, beat number one, two, last through three. Don't put three there, put a dash. And then there's a separate attack, starts here on the next measure, one, tied, tied. And actually I have a, I noticed this before, I have a something incorrect on this correct answer. Do you see what's incorrect here? Can you tell me which measure has something incorrect? Measure number one, measure number two, measure number three, measure number four. One of those has an incorrect counting. Measure one, yes. So I did that wrong. There should not be a two there. If there was a two there, there would be three separate sounds. If there was a two there, it would sound like this. One, two, three, one. One, two, one. But it shouldn't sound like it. it should sound like this. One, three, one. Okay. Going on. All right. Very quickly. Uh, assignment 10.3 has to do with uh, taking a scale and putting it into either solfege, uh, solfege syllables or numbers. So you have a scale. Each 
member of the scale uh, has a different number or a different syllable. Uh, if you look at this example, I will tell you it's a major key. What key is this in? Two sharps is the key of you might have if you don't have it memorized or you don't or you don't have a music background, you might not know that. So I'm going to tell you that uh, a major key with two sharps is the key of D. That is correct. Okay, so we're in the key of D. D major. This is really simple. Uh, I have to know what uh, what the notes of the D major scale. So I go, I can go in my book, and I, if I don't know what they are, I can go in my book and I can look up the notes of the D major scale. And I'm just going to tell you what they are right now. They are D. This will show up in just a minute. E. F sharp has to be F sharp. Look at the key signature. G A B C sharp must be C sharp. Look at the key signature and D. There is the D major scale. C E F sharp G A B C sharp D lousy singing, but that is the scale. <clears throat> so if I change that into syllables of soulfish, they are do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, or numbers are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, when you get back up to the D for number eight, it can be called eight or one, depending. Uh... Timothy asked some uh, circle of fifths. Is that you mean? That's how you're figuring out the key signature. I'm not sure what you mean by that. I'm gonna let him type, and I'm gonna keep going on here. Okay. So I just put oh to find the key signature. You can do it by the circle of fifths if you know how to do that. Certainly. Uh, okay. So we have a D major scale. There it is. I put it, I placed it into the solfege uh, syllables, and I placed it into the numbers of the scale. And now all I have to do is to transfer it to my notes that are up here in my song. So really, all you have to do is look there. If I ask you to do solfege, it's so 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 do. Me, so, 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 do, me. Then we're back down here. Uh, I'm on the second line. Look at look at the second line now. There's a D. What is D? Do, do. What is C sharp? T, T. What is B? La, la. What is A? So this is where sight singing comes in and all the intervals and all that, which you don't have to be able to do that. But this is how you transfer it. This is how you do that. Okay, or if I transfer it to the numbers, A is what number? It's number five. Five, 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 one, three. Five, 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 one, three. One one seven seven six six five, and that's what that sounds like. If that sounds like a, a melody that you would recognize, five 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 one three five 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 one three one one seven seven six six five, or so 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 do me. Okay, so that's simple, simple to do that. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna. I want to ask you if. When, if you can see this web page that just came up, would you please let me know if you can see that? Okay. This is one uh, of the websites that's listed 
this is pianocordfinder.org, and I'll I'll send out an email with these. But if you're having, uh, if you if you want practice on these, uh, this is a generator. It generates the most basic rhythms, and uh, you can go through these. You're having trouble now. They're using the standard numeric. If any of you use the standard numeric system and you already know it, that's fine. One e and a, one e and a, two and three and four and one e and a, two and three and four and. This just generates all different kinds of rhythms. I'm going to show you these. Uh, this is a website that has a lot of information on rhythms rest, everything like that. This is KenDavies.net. And this one's kind of a really strange one, but it's kind of fun. Uh, and you probably you can't hear the audio on this. But it shows you visually how long the notes are lasting. And you can make up your own rhythms here. Uh, let's see here. I just left it in 4-4 four, four time. Got to put the right number of beats in there. Can you see that as I'm putting it on there? Can you still see it filling up or not? I, I'm not really sure sometimes how this works. So, uh, okay, you can't see it then. All right, so it's not showing the visual. But anyway, you go through there and you put in your own uh, rhythms and then it will play them and show you how they are counted and what they sound like. Uh, also, for practicing, okay, can you see the new um, website up there, goodear.com? Okay, so I guess whenever I change the wet, the, that, when I change it, could you see it change or no? I'm kind of using you as a guinea pig now. Did it change to a different page for you? It has all kinds of intervals here on this. Okay, so I'm not sure why you can't see that. I'll have to ask uh, Wimba people. Uh, anyway, when you go to this one, goodear.com, it will ask you to enter, and then it has beginner intervals, intermediate. Uh, it will ask you intervals, and you can practice uh, hearing those intervals, and it, it's very good. I'm going to put those uh, in an email and send it out. And I know I've taken a lot of time here. Does anybody have any questions that you'd like to ask or specific things uh, on the assignments or anything like that? I hope that you can use the information and uh, it will help you with assignments. Usually the people that are, I was telling Tim before, the people that are signed in and trying to get help are the people that are already doing pretty well, and, and I think all of you are doing all right. But um, if you don't have any questions about anything, sure, no questions? Nothing you want to ask about any of these assignments on Lesson 10? I appreciate you signing in and I appreciate your attention and participation and I hope you have a great evening.
ਨਿਕਲਦੇ ਆ